there's a lot of lot of things that came together to make it what it was. And I do think it was at the time as good as any show on TV. I said, when I finished that, there's nothing I looked around and thought I'd want to work on that because I, I yeah. worked on what I thought was the best show. Um, yeah, I think it was a, it was a mix of things. I think I think it was accessible. It was very positive and open minded. Every year, some show would start that tried to on another channel that tried to be like Soccer AM and, and they'd never do very well because they all were nasty. They, they didn't get, we would make fun of things, but it was always in a positive, inclusive way. And I think a lot of the time people get that wrong. Um, and you can like, for example, had a, if a player did an outrageous dive, the other shows would go, oh, we, that's look at this terrible dive. Look at that and make fun of the player. Whereas we'd say, look at this horrendous foul on this player. That sort of thing. So we're still laughing at the same thing, but we're on the player's side, if you know side. what I mean, sort of thing. So I think a lot, a lot of that. I think we had incredibly high standards, and everyone worked incredibly hard. I think I learned so much from Tim Lovejoy about about that, and it's it annoys me. It's annoying in some ways because now. I very rarely work in something that has as high standards, <laughs> and so it gets it, it, it's it's frustrating when you're used to that sort of thing. But um, but yeah, so I think I think a real mix of things, talented people on the team, being sort of left alone by Sky, yeah, a, a, a combination of things coming together in the best possible way. Looking back now, do you think it's aged well? Because I think it's some clips on YouTube and stuff, and you were very close to the envelope with a lot of things. Um, do you think that's part of the reason why it's sort of, I don't know, once sort of your era sort of went and they changed the presenters and had to change the format and stuff, it sort of lost, as you said, it lost that appeal. Do you think that's because of the way the world's moved forward? Or No, I think I think if we were still there, we would have moved with the world, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And there were, things, there were things even at the time that I remember thinking, I'm not sure about this. Um, but also I think like what's acceptable changes all the time, yeah. sort of thing like that. And and um I'm just trying to think of examples. I, I in my first in my first year or so, so in about two thousand and one, probably two thousand, two thousand and one, when I first started at Soccer AM, I the only cigarette I've ever smoked in my life was for a sketch on the show. But could you imagine turning on the TV now at like that Nine is. in the morning, seeing some bloke smoking in a studio, it'd be mental. But at the time, it was fine, sort of thing for that sort of thing. But um, so so things things change really, and I think a lot of the time people look people talk about lad culture, sort of thing, and, and in a negative way, which I get. But I think in the early days of it, it was quite inclusive. I think in when I was a kid, I remember that, like men would go to the pub. And have a pint, and women would go somewhere else, or they might go and have a glass of wine, somewhere of this. But with sort of when the sort of lad culture sort of thing came about, it was like men and women together watch the football, having pints, sort of thing. And it was by no means perfect, but I think it was quite a sort of inclusive sort of thing, an imperfect inclusive sort of thing. When you look at what came before, because change is gradual, and, and obviously it's better now and more inclusive for everyone. But you get there in stages, not all at once. And I also think it, it felt like you guys were just talking to your mates, as in we were included as your mates. Because even like when Chris Kamara was walking around stadiums, going into places, you, you weren't allowed. That was quality yeah. because in a way, you was watching it, you thinking to yourself, oh, please, Chris, just go in that door. And then it all of a sudden, it <laughs> opened that door. All right. And I think that helped because you guys were sort of doing what we'd want to do. I think, it, I think it is a group of people who, I mean, we obviously came to work together, sort of thing, but became friends there and and gone well um just making fun of each other in the way that friends do sort of thing yeah no exactly no. Uh, was there much ego on set no one ever went there to be on tv everyone went there to work on a tv show and then got into doing sort of things so tim was very good uh putting an atmosphere where that wasn't really acceptable and if anyone had got a bit too big for their boots, they'd get shot down pretty quickly, I think. So, no, I mean, I think generally people were there to make a show that we were really proud of and do the best possible thing. And it be—it was really hard work. And there were times where we'd be sitting we were with people I work with sort of moaning about things or 
saying how hard it was. But then you'd have a great show, and the next day you'd be in the pub with Noel Gallagher watching the Manchester Derby or something. You go, do you know what? This is it's all right. You have to put a load of work to be able to make it look effortless. People would say to us, people would come down and go, so what do you guys do during the week? And we go, well, make make the show sort of thing. So I always used to say I got sacked for stealing, but the reality is, um, no, I, I for a while I wanted to leave, but we were doing so much, just because I wanted to change, because I've done it for so long, but we were doing so much good, fun stuff that I didn't want to leave and then hear what everyone else was doing. So like towards the end, we got to play football at Wembley Stadium. I went to three Champions League finals. We went to like get all, whatever gigs I wanted, like Noel Gallagher's 40th birthday party and stuff. Like There's a lot of a lot of good things, good fun things going on. Um, and then Tim got an opportunity to start an internet TV channel thing in the early days of internet TV um, with Simon Fuller. And I was, I think for some of the guys, it was a bit of a sort of like, oh, I'm not sure what to do. But for me, I was like, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. 100% in because I wanted to leave anyway so um yeah so we went we went and worked at this thing called Channel B for a couple of years 